Good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, we're glad you decided to join us today. Um, as we get before we get started, just want to remind you about iHeart Laporte that's coming up this next Saturday. Um, we're going to be serving food from 11 till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so we want to encourage you to be here uh, if you're going to help out to be here no later than 10:30, and uh, we're going to get cooking and uh, get get uh, doing everything we need to to uh, just celebrate. Uh, the first responders here in town, let them know how much we care about them and that we're praying for them. Um, so come and be a part of that. Um, but today we are going to continue on in our study looking at uh, having a strong foundation. And so we're going to continue our look at uh, the beginnings of humanity and how things sort of started. And uh, today we're going to be uh, doing a sermon I'm, I'm titling Headed Downhill Fast. Um, and so we're going to, to get right into that. But before we do, uh, let's go ahead and ask the Lord to uh, bless our time together. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to take a look at your word. Lord, help us to see what you'd have us to see, uh, to, to make our, our foundation solid, to understand the reasons uh, why we need you as Savior, Lord Jesus, uh, the reason why... Uh, Lord, our, our world is is broken. Lord, help us to hold on to this. Help us to to make our our, our beliefs set because, Lord, we, we have looked and we have researched and we have studied. Lord, help us to, to live a life that is honoring to you. And, Lord, doing that with making sure our foundations are set and what we believe and why we believe it. Help us to do... All that you'd have us to do, be with the, the prayer th is prayers that are on our hearts and minds. Uh, Lord, we ask that you be with the prayer requests that, that uh, we've mentioned previously. Lord, those that are dealing with issues and difficulties going on right now. But Lord, we ask that whatever it would be, that your will would be done. Lord, we ask that you be with us, guide us, and direct us. We ask all this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, headed downhill fast. You know, I know we're we're sort of still finishing up the Olympics right now, or or the Olympics should be finished up by the time this this airs, I believe. Um, but uh, you know, I I kind of like the Winter Olympics. Uh, you know, Summer Olympics are great, and they have so many things. But I love the Winter Olympics, and and one of the scariest sports to me is downhill skiing, and and not even downhill skiing, but ski jumps. You know, they, they go on this huge ramp and they get going super, super fast and then they jump out over nothing and and uh, basically you end up from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain in a few seconds. And, you know, unfortunately, that is a very accurate description of how fast sin corrupted our world. We went from Adam and Eve falling for the trap of, of Satan and and falling for the same temptation that he was tempted with, that he fell for. And then we, we go, and, and it's just literally the next chapter. We go from w desiring to be equal with God to the first murder. And so we're going to take a look at, at sort of the descent of man and the fact that, that God even gets to the point that he regrets that he ever made us. And, and that, that's so sad. And it was if it wasn't for you know God's mercy, God's love... The fact that Abraham found mercy in the, the sight of God, you know, where would we be? But God had a plan, and his his plan was was going to, to restart things and to, to let things start fresh. But we're not going to get there quite there today, but we are going to look at uh, Cain and Abel, uh, their, their uh, descendants, and uh, just sort of see how man ended up on a on a downhill slope real quick. So, we're going to start today in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 and uh, we're going to start in verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Uh, there we go. It says now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and says I have acquired a man from the Lord. And she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And so, you know, we remember the judgment that came to Adam and Eve 
um, after they had sinned, that God said that she that Eve was going to have great pain in childbirth, um, but that through her, um, one of her descendants, that um, there was going to be this this one that was going to to uh, bruise the snake's head, and and the snake was going to bruise his heel, and and so this one that was prophesied to to restore the relationship, the one that was prophesied to 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 bring things back the way they were, you know, Eve has, you know, she becomes pregnant. Um, she, she ends up giving birth. And, and so this was, this was, you know, a, a very difficult thing. Um, is anyone who's experienced, uh, or seen, uh, birth, it's, it's a difficult event, but she, she was excited when her son was born. She, she says, I've acquired a man from the Lord. And, and I wonder if she, she was thinking or wondering, you know, is this the child? Is this the one that, that God is, is was promising that Jesus was, uh, you know, the, the Messiah, the, the one that was going to come. And, and we know that Cain was not Jesus. This was going to be a long time away. Um, but you know, she was wondering, is this the, the son that God had promised? And so she was excited, and so she not only had Cain, but but she got pregnant again, had another another son named Abel, and so she had two brothers here, and they were uh, one of them ended up following probably in his father's footsteps. Cain became a tiller of the land, so a farmer, and then a Abel ended up keeping sheep. Now, this is kind of interesting because you know when we think about sheep you know this was these were sheep that wasn't kept for food these were probably sheep that were kept for clothing uh for wool all this sort of stuff and and we see that that you know eve is the one who is having these kids in and so the children are were starting just in and just as god had promised you know through eve all the the people of the world was going to be the the mother of all and so we, we see that she is the, the mother of all living. Um, but we also see, uh, you know, Cain and Abel, and they start out, and here they're these brothers, and, and we don't know how long from verse 2 to verse 3 is. We don't know if it was a short time, if they were still quite young, if they had grown up. Um, but we see sort of their childhood skipped over. We don't know exactly how that went, but we do see what happens later on. And so we see Cain and Abel's childhood here in verse 3, or uh, afterwards. Um, it says, And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord, and Abel brought of the first firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And so... Cain basically brings an offering to God, and, and you know, we don't know exactly how it was. We don't know if, if Cain brought his his best produce or if he just, you know, grabbed some produce off of, of his, his uh, farm as he was walking by. We don't know exactly, but but basically Cain gave of the stuff that grew, and, and he, you know, it, it, it's... We don't know exactly, but we have to to believe, you know, Adam and Eve are telling their children about what happened and, you know, remembering that, that God had given them uh, animal skin coverings uh, to cover themselves and that sort of thing. And so, uh, you know, when, when they bring this offering, Cain brings of the produce of the ground, but Abel ends up bringing the, the firstborn of his flock. It's a sacrifice. I mean, he, he the animal is killed. He brings uh, the the uh, portion of the fat and all this that to to God, and and so whether he he truly understood or if it was a a a looking ahead to to what Jesus was going to do uh, to the time when when sacrifices were were used. God looked favorably on Abel's sacrifice, this this blood sacrifice, this this animal that had died and perished, and and it was a reminder that that because of sin, death had entered the world, and it cost Abel something. I mean, he cared about his animals. It, you know, this was his 
the the firstborn of the flock this was this was this was precious and yet he he gave it to the lord and so this the this cost abel something you know when we go well you know cain was giving of his produce and all this but you know to be to to think of the care and the 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 work that goes into taking care of animals and to, to kill that animal and offer it to the Lord versus grabbing some, some corn off the co you know, corn off the stock or, or some apples or, or whatever it may have been that, that Cain had, had done. They, they just really don't compare. And so God was happy with, with Abel's offering, but Cain, he, he wasn't happy, pleased with and, and so Cain became very angry, you know, that, that God was was happy with his brother, but not him. And so we see that that God warns Cain. He said, we see this. So it says, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And so God warns him. He says, "Hey, don't be upset. If you do what's right, don't I won't I accept what you do?" He says, "But but if you if you don't do well, you know, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. It, it wants to conquer you, but you should overcome it." And so he warns him. He says, "Watch out. Don't be angry with your brother." But Cain ignores God's warning and we see that not only does he ignore God's warning, but he lets that the anger just fester and grow until it's not just anger, it's hatred, it's it's wrath. And we see this, verse 8, Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. And so this this jealousy of, of God's favor became this this wrathful attack, and, and so Abel was, was killed by his brother. I mean, Cain comes up and, and kills his brother. And so God is is you know going to to confront uh, Cain with with what has happened, and so we see that God once again speaks to Cain, and it says the Lord said to Cain, "Where is Abel your brother?" And he says, "I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper?" You know he he lies to God. He gets short with God. I mean, you know we see that that. Even in the beginning, when, when mankind has sinned, you know, Adam's first thing was to blame Eve, but also said, well, Eve's the one that you gave me, God. And, and so not only was he he blaming someone else, he was blaming God himself. And, and we see, you know, Cain sort of follows in the same path. He, he's like, where's your brother? And well, I don't know. And am I his keeper? Am I supposed to know where he is all the time? And so God you know, confronts him and says, and he says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out from this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. And so, God, you know, here's this guy's chosen profession. He's a farmer. And, and he, because of the murder, God says, You're not going to be able to farm any longer. The, the land is not going to, to yield. And so he is basically going to be a nomad going from place to place to to get wild food and, and that sort of stuff. He's not going to be able to farm crops and stay in one spot. And so he's he's going to be a wanderer on the earth. He's and, and he is he's crying out to God saying, My punishment's more than I can bear. And and you know what when somebody sees me, they're going to know what I've done and they're going to take vengeance upon me. And so God sets a mark on him that, that no one should kill Cain, but that vengeance would be wreaked sevenfold on anyone who harmed Cain. And so 
we end up having the family line of Cain and we have have uh, God is going to to give Adam and Eve another son a son of promise that that the family line will be carried through and so Cain ends up going on and, and we see the family line of Cain and, and what what happened to him and it says verse 16 then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod to the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And Enoch was born uh, Irid, and Irid begot Mahul, and Mahul begot Meth uh, Methusah, and Methushal uh, began, begot Lamech, and Lamech, uh, and so we, we have to Lamech. Now, we see the, the family tree and it starts expanding. And so, you know, Cain ends up building a city. He builds it, names it after his son, and and his son ends up having children. And we get down and so we go down and it's, it's you know, Enoch, uh, Arad, Mahul, uh, Methusel, and then Lamech. So we're, we're down to great, great, great grandchild. And then we get to Lamech. Now, now Lamech is is interesting because we start seeing, as the generations go, the the greater and greater and greater depravity, the the more and more sin. And we see this as we look at at Lamech. Lamech took for himself two wives, and the name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore J uh, bore Jabel. And his, uh, he became uh, the father of all who dwell in tents and have livestock. And his, his brother's name was Jubal, and his father of all those who play harp and the flute. As for Zillah, she also born Tubal Cain, and is an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, hear my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And so we see that that even out of of these people that, you know, were were evil and and were were growing and and farther and farther away from God. We see that, that God blesses him in, in some respects. You know, we see, you know, father of those that keep livestock and in and, and those who dwell in tents. Um, we see, you know, craftsmen and um, bronze and iron and, and so metallurgy and all this sort of stuff. We see musicians and, and, and we see all these gifts that God gave to man to, to bring beauty upon the world. But then we hear Lamech and he, he comes to his, his wives and he says, you know, I've, I've killed a man for wounding me. You know, a man injured me and I, I killed him. And and so if Cain was avenged 77 times, I'll be avenged 77 full. You know, just hatred and, and venom and hostility. And so we see, you know, we went from desiring to be like God and, and looking up and, and, and sinning in our, our, our desire to, to be equal to God and then we went from there to to murder and killing your own sibling to to it's just it just is heading downhill fast and so mankind is is just on this downward trajectory and we but we we see that even in the midst of this god brings back hope and we see this in verse 25 and it says and adam knew his wife again for she bore a son and named him seth for god has pointed another seed for me instead of abel whom cain killed and as for Seth, to him also was a son born and named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. And so people began to, to pray and ask for God's blessing and, and seeking after God. And, and so we see Seth, it, it starts a new line, a new family family line. And it's going to be through the line of Seth that, that we're going to get um, some of the the. the the great people we hear of in the early part of the Bible. And so as we get to, to Genesis chapter 5, we see the, the timeline in the, the family tree of Seth, and, and we see some amazing stuff. And and, and there's a, a picture that I'm going to try to show you. I, I, I know you probably won't be able to see all that much, but I want to show this to you. This is, this is the Genesis 5 timeline, and it looks at 
the descendants of Seth. And so we have Adam and he had Seth. Um, and then Enosh. Then we have Canaan, uh, Mahul, uh, Mahal, and Jared, and Enoch. And, and Enoch is such an amazing person because it says that he walked with God. He didn't just call call on God. He walked with God. And so he he was his relationship with God was very close. And it says that he only lived um, comparably a short time, but then God took him that he did not see death. Uh, you know, it talks about, and, and as we look in chapter five, it, it talks about, you know, and this person begot this person, they had other sons and daughters, and then they died, and, and so on and so forth. But Enoch did not. But Enoch had a child, and his name was Methuselah. Now, now Methuselah is, is, is amazing and one that we remember in the Bible because he was the oldest person to ever live. And I believe it was, uh, I believe it was 969 years old very old person and what's amazing is we look is is uh you know when noah was born when we get to noah which is a couple of generations later you know methuselah had lamech lamech had noah when when noah was born seth was most likely still alive and so it's kind of amazing to see is is you know we're talking direct here from the horse's mouth pretty much uh, stuff with, with, you know, hearing God, the story of God and what's happened. And, and so this wasn't gen so, so many generations that, you know, they weren't hearing what God had done and how things, you know, that we're only talking one generation removed from, from Adam, who was at the Garden of Eden, who was, who was the first created man. man. And so as we look at this, it, it's, it's amazing to see that the word of what had happened would have been passed down and passed down and passed down. And then we get to, to Noah. And, and we get to God's plan through Noah. Because, you know, as we look at chapter 5, we see the descendants of, of Seth. We see the the family line that was going to carry God's promise you know the rest of the world was was falling apart uh, there was hatred and anger and violence uh later on when we get to chapter 6 it says that that man did nothing but think of evil from the time he woke up till the time he went to bed and 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 so God regretted ever making mankind and and that's that's just so sad but, you know, as we look at, at Genesis in, in chapter 4 and 5, we see that, that mankind was on this downward trajectory. Um, we also see that God had a plan through it all. You know, when we get to Noah, um, he is going to, to save his creation through Noah. And Noah is going to build an ark that's going to be just this amazing uh, depiction of who Jesus is going to be, what he was going to do, that he was going to be the, the, the path of salvation. And so we start seeing God setting the groundwork um, for what was, what was going to happen. But for that, we'll have to uh, wait for next week. And so we will get at that next time. So, you know, a lot of people will, will ask questions, you know, where did where did uh, Cain get his wife? And, and you know, to be real honest, when God told Eve that she was going to have pain in childbirth, if she didn't know what childbirth was, what that would have made no sense to her. And so, you know, Adam and Eve most likely had many, many children while they were in the Garden of Eden. Um, that, that, you know, in, in even afterwards, you know, he Adam had other sons and daughters. Um, so, so Cain's wife would have been his sister and, and, you know, a lot of people go, well, that's incest. When God first created, you know, there, there wasn't any option at that point in time. They were all related. All humanity is related. And God didn't put the prohibition of marrying a, a close relative until, uh, much later on. And, and so this wouldn't have been a sin at the time. This was God's plan. It was his purpose to populate the earth. Um, but, you know, as we get to today, you know, it, it's the mankind has continued to to feel the effects of sin. And so 
we know that this that is that is something that is forbidden in God's word uh, it has it was later on we know today through science that that would be a really bad idea for for very close relatives to intermarry and have children um you know God had a plan he he showed it and he continues to show it today you know when we look at the things that God told people you know, he did it for their protection. He did it to keep them safe. But there's so many people that, that look at what God said and God's plan and they want to ignore it. But, you know, as we've we've looked at is the first few weeks of the Bible, we, we've looked at how God said things happen. And we're going to next week, we're going to look at, at the flood and we're going to look at uh, Noah and how he built the ark and, and what God's plan was for the, the salvation of mankind um, to save them from the dis this destruction that was coming. Um, but in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at the evidences um, of, of what we can see in, in God's word that says that what he said is true. So we're going to be looking over that over the next few weeks. And so I hope that you will continue to join us and continue to be a part of that. Well, as we get ready to close, let's ask the uh, Lord to be with us this week. Uh, ask his blessing for I Heart Laporte. And uh, we just uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to take a look at your word. Lord, as we seek after what you say happened, Lord, help us to, to have that firm foundation, to see how things were and how things went together and how all this fits. Lord, as we, we look at, uh, you know, next week and we look at, at the ark and, and in, in the next couple of weeks as we continue to look at the evidence of, of that's in your word that and also in your world that says that this is how it happened. Lord, help us to build that firm foundation that's not going to get rocked or moved, that we will be able to, uh, Lord, be the people you'd have us to be, that we can say and speak with confidence of, of what has been and why we need things, why, why we need a Savior. Help us to do what you'd have us to do. Lord, be with us this next week as we have I Heart Report, and we just pray that everything would go well with it. Lord, be with us and be with us as we continue on this week. And we ask all this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great day. We'll see you next week.